Last week, we built our first oil refinery, which is producing all the plastic, rubber, and heavy oil residue that we need for our factory for the time being. And it's time we turn that heavy oil residue into fuel. And by doing that, we're actually going to increase our power capacity quite considerably, considering it's going to be a rather small fuel plant. And the reason that we're doing that is so that we can totally renovate our starter factory. All of this needs to be removed and rebuilt, but that will probably come in the next episode. First though, we are going to have to grab some more resources. We're going to need a lot of concrete. Um, on top of that, we're probably gonna need some encased industrial beams. We're also going to need some copper sheets, a couple of these and that too. Okay, I think we're ready. And now we just need to follow the heavy oil residue, which should be in here, yes and find out where it's going. Oh look, there's another pipe and another. It's like a little treasure hunt. Um, and there's one over here. I definitely didn't do this the other week. Oh wow, what a perfect spot for a fuel generator factory. All right, enough joking around. This is where we've decided to place our fuel generator setup. Uh, originally, or at least for the time being, seeing as we've only got a little bit of heavy oil residue, we're not going to be running many generators. So we're going to start off just by building some of these. I think we should go maybe, uh, what's that, 11, 21. I think it still needs to be a bit bigger, but not much bigger. And then from here, we are going to turn a corner, I think. We're going to, I want to say, make this fit in, like integrate it into the terrain around us, um, or at least the nature. And I think though the factory will be out in the ocean, that we can just add curves to, to make it feel a bit more natural. I'll be honest, I'm really not sure why I came up with this curvy build. I know I was trying to make it more integrated into the nature, but it just looks like it's standing apart. It's a pretty shape though. Whilst we're going to collect some more resources, I thought I should mention something. So surprisingly, September is going to be a super busy month for the channel. And one announcement that I have for you already is that I'm looking to take on board an editor to regularly produce content for the channel. So if you're experienced in video editing and want to stretch your creativity during your spare time and become part of a growing channel, make sure to check out the editor brief below. Uh, I've attached it to a link in the description. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but now that we're getting our resources, let's head back into the video. At this point, we have started to compartmentalize what's going on in this factory. So you can see in the top left section with the concrete, this is where we're going to have our train station. And to the right of that, uh, this is going to be the entrance to the fuel generator um, and fuel refinery setup. So we're going to place everything within here. But in order to know how many generators we need to fit in here, we're actually going to have to check out one of the refineries. So in here, we can select our residual fuel and we can see that we've got 60 heavy oil residue per minute turning into 40 fuel. Now I know we've got a full Mark 1 pipe, which is 300 heavy oil residue. So that translates to 300 divided by 60, which is five, five times 40, 200 fuel per minute. Uh, that also means that this is going to be a really small build. I mean, we're going to need to place what? Let me just place these really quickly. All five of these. That That is all we need in order to produce the fuel from this. We're going to have to expand it eventually. I would like to have the diluted fuel alts or even use the blender diluted fuel alt uh, once we've unlocked it. But the next thing for, why are these light? Oh, we haven't selected the recipe. The next thing that we need to do is work on the outer walls so we know how this whole build's going to look and then maybe do something with a walkway here, splitting the refineries from, I guess, all the fuel generators. Actually, that's a good point. I don't remember how much 
fuel a generator uses, but I think it's either 12 or 14. I think originally it was 15, right? So let's say it's 12. That's 17 fuel generators. Um, or if we go with 14, actually. 14.3, let's say. So 14.3, and then we times that by the amount of energy a fuel generator can produce. That's that's over 2000 megawatts of power, uh, which is really important because the next thing that we need to do once this is up and running is demolish this factory. We're going to tear it all down and rebuild it. And the reason that we want to rebuild it is we need to produce more items. For example, our next port of cool is to unlock industrial manufacturing. Though we have all of this being produced, we're going to need to produce computers. And if we go over to the expanded power infrastructure. We also need to produce these heavy modular frames and I haven't done any of that just yet. So we do need to get a lot of, uh, a lot more infrastructure in place for the, uh, the factory. And I cannot be doing it with this mess. We're also going to redo the storage area as well. And once we've unlocked trains, we'll redo all the transportation because I'm not a big fan of Hive tubes, to be honest. Uh, they do have their uses, especially right now but I'd much prefer to be using trains. But with that said, the first thing that we need to do is unlock the industrial manufacturing. We've got all the uh, resources here. And we're going to have to build a very temporary computer setup. The other thing that I need to do is get hold of some heavy modular frames. We're going to need those for, if I remember rightly, the manufacturer as well. Pretty certain it uses them. So what I'll probably do, if I'm honest, is either handcraft them, or if we need a lot, which we're going to, aren't we, for expanded infrastructure, we need 50. Um, I'm probably gonna just buy them with coupons from the awesome shop, because if we check this beast, you can see we're doing quite well with these. Um, so I won't mind spending a couple of coupons on resources if it's going to help us get further along. Though I don't recommend it. Obviously, because the price of coupons goes up each time you use them, it's better not to waste them on resources that can easily be automated. But we need to speed up our gameplay. Anyway, first thing, let's send uh, this off. There we go. Off you go, mate. Fantastic. One less thing for us to worry about. Next up, computers. Bye. And here we are. So this is the very temporary computer setup that we've got. It is a single manufacturer being fed by a constructor producing uh, steel screws. There's also a container there for cable, which is feeding straight into there. And then we have the overflow of plastic going towards the manufacturer. And we also have a splitter taking some, it's not efficient, uh, taking some plastic and combining that with copper sheets to produce those circuit boards. And if we jump down, actually that probably wasn't a good idea. We're gonna take some damage out. You'll see that we are slowly producing those computers. But the next thing that I want to show you is the walls. And I've got to say, I am super happy with how these have turned out. Um, they're not perfect yet, but you can see how we're using the, let me show you here, the coated foundations to really build depth. Don't be afraid to use these as walls. I know that it takes up a lot of room, but really when it comes to like really large builds, I mean, this is nothing in compared, to, compared to some builds, but you can, you can take a foundation or two as width for or depth for your, your builds. And what we've done is we've placed pillars on the end uh, so that they're slightly inside. And then we've got the glass behind. But what I really like is the combination of this coated foundation against the wall. Um, obviously, normally these would be placed here, but we've used the barrier trick once again, and we will use it more before the end of this, to replace a wall by holding control over the top of a barrier to get it in the place that we want. Um, so I'm going to repeat this on the other side, and then I think we'll also do, you can see we've started this walkway, let me remove this. 
We're going to have the line of ceiling where there will be lights above all of this. And then the next thing that I'm wrestling with right now for the sake of ease versus aesthetics is whether I want to do this kind of angular support, which looks really cool, but seems to be really difficult trying to get the same angle on the rest of these, or whether we're just going to make it a little bit easier for ourselves and watch, I won't be able to get it now. Basically, build across from one of these. It's right up there. Yeah, like so. That's probably the easiest way, and then we can run the power on top, but I do like this angle. The other thing that I want to do very quickly is grab these railings and run them across, and then I also want to place down these walls. So we're just layering things at this point to really make it look a little bit different. And we'll probably color that dark. I think that looks really nice. And then maybe um, I'll get some patterns and we'll run them down the middle. But that should give you a good idea as to what I'm doing in this factory. And then we'll, we'll have all the generators over here. We need what to fit 16 in. It's quite a lot. I'm not sure if I'm even going to have the resources for that. But the next thing that I need to do is double this up so that we have the roofs over there and then start working on the ceiling as well. <sighs> no rest for the wicked. And here we go. We're just finishing off this little support beam. I think we're going to need... Oh, I always end up r running out of resources. Um, so this is what we've got so far. We have the roof... Uh, slanted roof that we're going to be running with along with some lights that are going to be placed above this and then if we drop down here you can see that we have the other wall I think because of this weird uh, like curved wall that we've got going on here what we're probably going to do is just bring this straight across where it is and finish it here because otherwise I'm going to have to deal with doing a circular ceiling, which I really don't like doing. It's very difficult to get right in Satisfactory. So where possible, I avoid it. And uh, I guess so should you. But once we've covered this, we'll be working on this back plate and also placing down those generators. That's the next thing. And you can see, I've also built up this all the way along. And if we just pop over here, you can see that our fuel is going down. And if you look at the outline, you can see it running all the way over there. So this is where our manifold for the fuel generators will be. I may need to adjust this position slightly, but it uh, gives you a good idea as to what we have planned. Industry is bustling. Yes, we finally got the oil refineries running. We linked it up to the grid and thankfully we've not had any breakages. And they're now feeding our first six generators. So if we go and check out our fuel supply currently, you can see that our production is just over 1000 megawatts higher than what we need at the moment. This is exactly what we need to get started with the next project. Okay, so it's not yet finished, but I have done the back wall. As I mentioned, we've cut straight across the back and I'm so happy with how this is looking. Really, just really, really happy. The only thing that I would change is maybe these like diagonal walls. For me, I wish they were just smooth wish they were smooth but we can't do anything about that uh, unless we change them to concrete maybe but that's that's not for now the next thing that we're doing is oh i need to show you the inside what i was gonna say is the next thing that we need to do is the front section here we also need to unlock trains but that's going to come on at a later date but look at the lighting oh i love that i love that i want to have some patterns on the wall here but i really like this kind of aesthetic with the lights above you could probably even add some more the other thing that i've done is if we run around here i've uh, prepped a little walkway it's so loud 
but there will be another row of generators. So, yeah, really happy with how this is. And I've added another support beam straight down the mid. What is this? What is this? We're going to need to place another one just on the end. Do I have the resources now? I do. Um, there we go. Perfect. And you may have noticed the other thing, if you had a particularly keen eye, that the power is all run along here, like I mentioned originally, and then it's brought up inside the pillars, the, the inside the large pillar frames along the, uh, the, the small pillars. And that is connected to the outside network and um, providing all of that extra power. Yum, yum, yum. Really happy with how this is turning out. I must admit the front isn't as spectacular as I wanted it to be. I still really like it, but we have this entrance just to the right, which is going to be for the trains. And then I'm umming and ahhing about this pillar like sticking out. I think it would be better to have it move in earlier on. But we're going to go straight through the little entrance here. And you can see that this has like a, a nice little opening. I'm liking once again the use of the coated foundations and then the diagonal wall just in front to break it up. So that's looking good. And then we also have this little catwalk which brings us along the top. And the idea is that what? Uh, uh, you saw nothing. <laughs> the idea is that this is going to be overlooking the trains coming in and also the whole project as we extend this out. But with that finished, we can now move on to the next project, which will be working on this. But guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And if you do want to become part of the team for my channel, which we're going to be building over the next coming months, then make sure to check out the editing brief that I have below. I, I will make sure it's linked in. I look forward to hearing from you. Special thanks goes to all of our supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, Cerebral Tag, James Owen, Five Less, and Jerry Two, as well as our Lunas, The Calamity, Dixie Chris, and Ben, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Saltron Husky. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.